Hi, I'm Nate with Average Shack Archery Pro Shop and Range here in Fultzburg, PA, and today I want to go over how I set up a sight tape from start to finish. So this is a question that I get asked a ton in the shop and particularly now as people are moving away from like their tack and 3D shoots and they're moving into their hunting rigs and they have to change up their arrow setup significantly slower, maybe even their bumping poundage and getting a little bit more speed. Whatever the case may be, they're having to build a sight tape. Now, when it comes to building a sight tape, a lot of people get really daunted and that could be either for a single pin slider or a multi pin slider. We're gonna cover both in this video. But the premise of this video is that you have purchased a sight that has has pre-made sight tapes to it. So using something like Archer's Advantage or other printable style sight tapes is not something we're really gonna cover today. I'll touch on it here and there. But for example, like this Redline RL2 single pin, something that we carry in my store and I actually used last year with great success. I plan on using it again this year, uh, is that this comes with a whole bunch, I think it's a little bit over 40 uh, adhesive sight tapes that are already pre-built. Any major manufacturer is going to sell sight tapes on a single pin sight that's say probably about 100 bucks and up, 150 bucks and up. Uh, they're going to have sight tapes. So that's CBE, that's Redline, uh, that's HHA, uh, the Spot Hog, and there's a whole bunch of others that I'm not mentioning. But they're gonna have pre-made sight tapes and those sight tapes are based on the speed. So the longer the tape, the slower the bow, and the shorter the tape, the faster the bow. And we're gonna cover this as we go through. But first things first, when it comes to getting a sight tape, is I like to try to establish, if my bow will allow it, a positive stop. Just excuse the kids playing in the background. It's outside time. In my opinion, buying a slider style sight that doesn't have the ability to have a positive stop, I think is a huge misplace of your money. So what that means is something like on this Redline RL2 or any of the Redline slider sites or even on the CBE slider sites and stuff like that, the housing itself can move independently of the wheel. So we all know the wheel, whether it's back here or up here, it moves the whole housing up and down, right? And that's how you go up and down your tape. But separate from that, as you see, as I get to the top of the track or a positive stop at the top of the track, Track. Separate from that is the housing be able to move by itself. So there's a bolt right here on the outside that allows me to move this housing up on this dovetail track up and down completely independent of the wheel. What this allows me to do is wind the wheel all the way to the up position, not to the down position, but all the way to the up position. And then I can lock that into place and leave the wheel in place. With the wheel left in place, I can now move my sight up and down, and then I can get what is known as a positive stop 20. So once I move and get that uh, vertical position figured out for 20 yards, which is what I'm standing at right now, once I get that position figured out, I can then have a positive stop for my 20. So let's say I think a deer's at 30 yards, I know he's gonna come down that trail at 30 yards, and I have my sight set to 30. In the event that he moves rapidly, chases a doe, changes trails on me, something like that, I can then, using that positive stop, wind it up, it hits that positive stop, I can't go any further, and now my sight is stuck there, but I know I'm at 20 yards, and that is a positive stop or a positive feeling. Now, the only issue with this is that this isn't always possible depending on the make of the bow and the bow and arrow setup. So this bow here right now, I'm shooting 55 pounds at 31 inches, and I'm shooting with a lighted knock and 125 grain broadhead. Uh, this gold tip 340 XT Hunter, it's gonna come out to about 450 grains. It's only shooting about 260 feet a second right as it leaves the bow. I'm going to be surprised if I can get a positive stop out of this bow, just because that's a little bit on the slower side to get that positive stop. I might end up having to be down a little bit on the dial and I can't get that full positive 20. That's okay. Um, it's still better than being all the way, you know, having to be all the way up or down or in the middle somewhere rather uh, on the slide. Um, so that way at least I get somewhere close to my 20 positive stop in the heat of the moment. So don't panic if your site can't offer you a positive stop. It's not a necessity, but if you can have that by just uh, leaving that locked in a 20 position and then sliding up and down, it's a great place to start. Also, usually with that positive stop, the tapes are actually built to start at 20, obviously at the top, and then work their way down as the indicator goes down the track. So if you can get that positive stop very close to it, it helps you get the full length of the tape as it runs down. So what I've done here is I've come to a laser verified 20 yards, and I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a group down here. Now I shot a little bit, so I know that my left right isn't terrible. Uh, this tape here was set when this bow was set up at 60 pounds with a totally different airway, totally different spine. So I'm definitely gonna have to make some changes 
changes here. But I'm still gonna use this as my marker tape or your dummy tape as I like to call it. So usually a dummy tape is blank uh, and you make marks on it and we'll do that as we go through this video. Um, but I'm gonna use the colored one here so you have even a better visual representation. So like I said, first things first, I'm just going ahead and shoot a three arrow group down here and see where it sits. And I'm gonna move just the side housing independent of the wheel. After that first shot, if anything, we're about an inch high, half inch high of perfect center. I don't know, my second angle camera's down there. <laughs> we might be a lot closer than I actually think. These arrows don't weigh too much different compared to my last ones, and 55 to 60 pound drop isn't that significant. We'll see it later with the tape building. Yeah, we're definitely right in there. Maybe just a touch high. Let me go down and look. All right, so I definitely was at least a solid two inches high at 20 yards, which is fine. My left right was really good. No complaints there. That one was a touch left. I definitely broke on the left side of the center. So now I'm going to loosen up this screw here and I'm going to move my sight housing independent of my positive stop. I've got this thing locked all the way down. The wheel can't turn. So I'm going to just like with any other sight, this goes for single pin sights, three pin slider sights, fixed pin sights, whatever, you chase the arrow. So if I'm hitting high, I move my sight housing up. If I'm hitting low, I move it down. If I'm hitting left, I go left. If I'm hitting right, I go right. So I'm gonna go up not much here. The red line RL2 is really nice. It has witness marks on the outside uh, as well on the block. So you actually get a, a good representation of how far you've moved. I don't think I need to go more than a 16th of an inch. That's what's on this uh, witness mark here. Go ahead and put another group down range. I think that one is going to be money. A little on low side on my part, I think it's right there. That one's right in there. I think I hit another arrow, but we definitely have a really good group down there. Now traditionally I would go ahead and put several 20 yard groups down there just to confirm that that's perfect. I feel pretty confident in that though and just for the sake of video, let's just move on. So I have a mark at 20 and if this was a blank tape, I'd pull out a Sharpie or a pen and where the indicator needle is sitting up at the top, I'd be able to make a Sharpie mark there and that's my 20 mark. So now I'm going to work my way incrementally back to get as far as comfortable as I feel shooting. The further the gap between a 20 and whatever the number is, the more accurate your sight tape will be. So I could do this at 20 and 30 yards and then find ones that match the tapes that line up and match and then just slap on that tape it's probably not going to be very accurate though really past 40 yards same thing is true if i go to 20 to 40 um, how back am i going to be past 60 yards and so on and so forth so the further you can go back so i ideally like to go just 20 to 40 that's good for most guys in a hunting situation you're really going to have a good tape built out to about 55 60 yards before things kind of get a little bit different depending on the arrow build if you can go 20 to 60 though, you can really hammer in and fine tune a sight tape for you. I'm gonna get back to 40, I'm gonna work my way back, and all I do to do that, now that I have my positive stop and I know my 20 mark, I can now loosen this and make sure my housing, right, I'm not touching the housing anymore, it's already sighted in. So now I can just work my way back by slowly going down a few yards, taking a few step back, shooting an arrow, and just making sure that I'm not gonna sail one eight feet over the target. I just don't wanna launch back to 40 yards and just send one, guessing how far that gap is. I'm gonna work my way back incrementally. So that's what we're gonna do now. That Morel High Roller has definitely seen better days. So right now I am at 41 and a half. This doesn't have micro clicks on it. Yeah, it's very close to 42, 41 and a half, 42. We're just gonna call it an even 42. Yeah, we're just gonna call it an even 42. It was like 41 and three quarters, which for a hunting site, dude like me out here in the whitetail woods, the Northeast, I will take that all day long. So if you had a blank tape, you just make a mark. I just added blue ink here to the black line that's already on 42 yards. So I know my 20 is 20 because I just moved the sight housing itself without touching the wheel. 42 on this tape is 40. And now I'm gonna work my way back to 50 and I'm gonna do the exact same process again. You don't need to see that on camera. You get the picture already. But if I can move back to 50, 60, 70, whatever I feel comfortable holding a group down there. So I'm holding about a three and a half, four inch group at 40 yards right now. I expect the same around 50. That's plenty good for me. If your group is six inches, but you feel like you're comfortably making good shots there, then make good shots there. So 
I'm gonna step back to 50, I'm gonna repeat this process, get one more mark, and then I'll show you how I pick the right tape to stick back on here. So we finally got that 50 yard mark figured out, and I ended up being at 54 yards on my tape. So I'm gonna make another blue mark with my pen here. And again, if you had a blank tape, you would just have blank marks. If you have the, if there has a dummy tape that has lines, I think HHA sells those, Spot Hog as well. Um, you can then go just mark that there. Don't try to memorize the numbers, just make a pen mark, be smart to yourself. Now what I'm gonna do is take my sight, and this is the most crucial step of all. I'm gonna take my sight, I'm gonna go back up to my positive stop of 20 yards, and I'm gonna lock it in there. So now it's back to my 20 yard mark, my 20 yard pen mark, or in this case, 20 yards on my tape. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna peel this tape off and I'm gonna stick it to a little piece of cut cardboard, and I'm now gonna go pick out my sight tape that matches up my setup. So we've come back over here to the workbench, AKA the top of the grill, like every backyard bow shooter, and I've taken off the tape, off the sight tape here, off the sight housing rather, and I have adhered it here to a piece of uh, cut paper plate. So now I have a nice, uh, good clean, it's not flimsy, it's not floppy, it's not sticking to everything. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take all of the prefab sight tapes that come with the Redline RL2. So as you see, number one here is the longest, therefore it's the slowest, and number 40 is the shortest, therefore it is the fastest. Originally, I was on tape number 29, and the numbers have nothing to do with your feet per second. So don't think, oh, I'm shooting 314 feet a second. No, that's not how that works. It's just the numbers that they have. So now that I have this cut on a nice rigid piece of uh, cardboard, paper plate, something like that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and match it up to, and it's not gonna be too far off, so it is kinda handy that I had this tape. I'm only a little bit slower. So like I said, I ended with 50 being at 54 yards, 40 was at 42 yards, and then 20 was at 20, which means I'm going to lay this down flat and I'm gonna keep working along the sheet and see which numbers match up. So let's see here. I'm gonna go over to like tape 33 as a good guess here, because I, or excuse me, the other direction. Let's go four tapes down. I'm gonna go to 24. So I'm gonna lay this flat here. I'm gonna line up my 20 and see here, 20 and 30. Let's see here, 40 and 42. Oh, it's close. It's close. What's happening here is I'm looking at my mark here and the 42 yards is just a touch over the 40 on tape 24. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up a little bit. I think it's a little bit too slow. Let's go to 25. I'm going to line up my 20 up top. And I'm going to look at my 40, which is 42 yards, and it's matching up perfectly with 40 on tape number 25. If I come down here to 50 and look at my tape here, my 54 yard mark is actually just, I mean, maybe 50 and a half yards underneath on tape 25. So again, the further the gap, the better off it is. So let's try this. I'm a little bit on the fast side. So let's go back here to tape 24. So I would rather have my 20 and 50 matched up or my 20 and 60 matched up rather than my 20 and 40 because it's a lot easier to have a little bit of forgiveness at shorter distances than it has is to have forgiveness at longer distances. So again, match up my 20 make sure it's nice and clean there's my 20 right there and my 50 is spot on with tape 24 and i mean if i am off on the 40 it's by half a yard at the most maybe even a quarter yard so tape 24 is going to be my new tape and again just to be on the uh, complete insane side if i was going over here to tape number 37 which is way too fast you can see here, and it might not line up perfectly, but you can see how my 20s are lined up, but then my 40 mark, which is at 42, is nowhere near number 37's 40, all right? And then 54 all the way down here, 54 is nowhere near tape 37's 50, okay? So that's how I know that that number 24, and again, I can double check this, come back over, line up my top 20s again, 54 and 50 looks really good. Now, this is where everybody likes to get their pants in a wad. Remember, this is not an exact science, okay? This is based off the feet per second of your bow and how it's expected to have a trajectory drop over distance. What will happen when you start getting past 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 yards, those of you who shoot tack or any sort of long range distance shooting, understand this, even if it's just in your backyard based on the arrow build. So like I said, this is a very standard arrow build. This is a gold tip XT Hunter. It's 340 spine. We got blazers on a little bit of a right helical here. 
We throw a lighted knock in here, maybe a little broadhead up front. We might have to look at our tape again and particularly at distance. And this is why whitetail shots are usually 40 yards and in, because A, it's really difficult to be accurate when your pin's blocking off most of the kill zone. But also, the further you go out, the less accurate the tape usually is based on all the variables of the arrow. So the more helical an arrow has, the more it's spinning, through flight, the more it drags and the more it slows down, the more it drops over distance. And you don't know that, the tape doesn't know that, it's just math. This right here is real world experience. So keep that in mind as you're building your sight tape that maybe you find it, you know, you do 20 and 60, you get to 100 and it's way off. Well, that's just the nature of the beast with sight tapes because it's also arrow build specific. I have a feeling that Tape 24 and I are gonna get along just fine for the type of hunting and uh, shooting that I do out to 50, 60 yards. So I'm gonna go ahead and take 24. And now again, this is where a pair of tweezers or fine fingers are gonna work. I'm a little bit fat and have a little bit of dermatological issues, so I've lost some feeling in my hands. But even still, I'm gonna come up here to my sight tape uh, window here on my sight. So tape 24 is the answer. However, there's a couple things to note. Number one, this is all predicated on you putting the sight back to 20, whether it has a positive stop or not before you go and try to stick the tape on here. You could do it at your last number, you could stick it on at 50, but trying to stick it on the middle, I think is silly. Get back to your positive stop or wherever your 20 mark is and stick the tape on from there. The last thing here is for those of us that wanna shoot long distance, you'll notice my tape, 90 some yards, doesn't even fit on the actual wheel. And that's because I just, I can't. My bow is not gonna be fast enough. 260 feet a second. Most guys really realistically shoot between 260 and 290. 290, I could probably get the whole tape on here. But if you have a shorter draw, lighter poundage, I'm gonna shoot 55 pounds, but a 31 inch draw with a normal arrow, still only shooting 260 feet a second. So just because you have a slider sight doesn't mean you're gonna be able to touch 100 yards. A better way to do that is if you're going to shoot a multi-pin slider sight, which again, you set up exactly the same way you set up a single pin slider. You just have to pick a pin in there that is going to be your sliding pin. If you use your bottom pin, you'll get the most amount of travel, you'll get the most amount of distance, and you should be able to touch 100, if not even further, with a normal hunting setup. So now the last step for me is taking a razor blade or a pair of scissors and trimming off the tag ends of this tape. And I'm good out to at least, I don't know, close to 90 yards, which I don't think the backyard is going to support that. But speaking of shooting your bow in your backyard, if you're doing that and you have a question that you feel needs answered, please do follow the links in the description below. Hit us up on Facebook and Instagram. You can always send us an email, averagejackarchie at gmail.com. And of course, you can always drop a comment here on YouTube. We can try to help you out as best as we can. If you're in the central Pennsylvania or the northeast region of the country, and you want to call Average Jack Archery Pro Shop and Range your home shop, you can always reach down to us as well. We'd be happy to service you. If you want us to ship some products around the country, if you live in the continental U.S., we'll be happy to do that as well. Just get in touch with us in the links in the description below. We'll be able to get outside and enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.